What's happening guys, today we're going to talk all about the pixel stretch effect. So let's get into it. What's happening guys, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks and tips aimed to help you improve your photography and photo editing. Now if you are new to this channel and you love photography and Photoshop, then make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with more videos just like this one. So the effect that we're going to be talking about today is the pixel stretch effect and it's essentially taking a line of pixels, stretching it out and then reshaping it into this cool pattern kind of thing. So there are other tutorials about this online but all of them kind of cover the basics. So what I'm going to be doing in today's tutorial is we're going to be creating this really cool circular sort of wavy pixel stretch effect behind these flowers using a Photoshop action that I created. Now this Photoshop action is available for download on the BeWill Creative Store and this action comes with a whole bunch of one click effects to make this whole process so much faster. So that's what we'll be using in today's tutorial but if you just want to learn the basic no Photoshop action needed pixel stretch effect then you can go and click the link down in the description below where I've written a blog post all about the basics of the pixel stretch effect and how you can start creating it with no Photoshop actions needed. So with that let's get started on today's tutorial. So before we hop into it, let's talk a little bit about the pixel stretch effect. So I'm going to go over here to a different image, and this is where I'll just explain the pixel stretch effect for those of you who are maybe unfamiliar with it. So essentially what the pixel stretch effect does is it takes a single line of pixels and then it stretches it out to make a cool line. So to do that, all we have to do is grab our marquee tool, click and drag, and go down here to our single column marquee tool. If we click on that, and we can just click anywhere on our screen, we can move it around to select a single column of pixels anywhere within our photo. I'm gonna go right over our model here with all the colors and things like that. So it's so small that you can't actually see the selection, but I know that it's already there, so I'll just press Command or Control J to duplicate that, and now it's on its own layer. Now with this new layer, I'm just gonna call this to pixel stretch. I'll grab my move tool by pressing V and I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna drag that line out making it larger and larger and larger move it over just a little and then I'll commit to that and watch what happens now we have this really cool looking streak of colors that is basically all the color that was sampled in that one line of pixels and now it's stretched out to create this really cool effect so that is essentially the pixel stretch effect in a nutshell and that is how you can create it for yourself now going back over to this flower image you can go and create the exact same thing you can drag and drop this exact pixel stretch over into this photo if you'd like but in this tutorial we're going to be creating circular pixel stretches and I'm going to be using a Photoshop action to make it really simple and easy for us now if you're wanting to get your hands on this Photoshop action I'll leave a link down in the description below where it is available for download on the bewillcreative.com store and in this pixel stretch action pack that is exactly what you see right here so it will come with two basic horizontal and vertical pixel stretches so it does all of this just in one click and then we'll have a few different curved options and then what we'll be using today's tutorial is a circle pixel stretch so it'll turn this into a nice circle for us and then we can go and create the effect that we're going for alright so now that we have a better understanding of what the pixel stretch effect is and how to basically create it we're gonna go ahead and use our circle pixel stretch Photoshop action to create this really cool effect for us now what we'll be doing is I'm just going to delete this pixel stretch layer so we just have my normal image and again if you're wanting to follow along you can download these two images for yourself down in the description below since I want to create this circular pixel stretch I'm going to select that Photoshop action and for those of you who are not familiar with Photoshop actions you can access them by going up here to window and down here to actions and then it will show up somewhere in this little bar here Photoshop actions essentially make an entire process of steps into one single click so by selecting this action I can just press play and watch what happens. It goes through all of the steps in creating a circular pixel blur effect and then as you see Photoshop has created a new document for us that has the circular pixel stretch effect based off of the colors in this photo. So I am just going to drag and drop this over into my flowers image because this is what our effect is going to be completely based off of. The reason I didn't do this effect on the flowers is because there isn't a lot of points of interest and in color in this black and white image essentially. So then that's why I went and called on the bright colors of this 
photo that I think will accent well behind the flowers here. So I'm going to quickly turn off the circle pixel blur layer and what we need to do first is separate our flowers from the background so then we can give the illusion that our circles are sitting behind our flowers. So to do that, since we're on a black background with white flowers, this makes life really easy for us. We're going to be using our channels. So clicking on my background layer, I'll just duplicate it for safe measure and I'm going to go over here to my channels tab. Now I'm going to look for the channel with the most contrast. In this case, it looks like green is the best option and I'm going to duplicate that channel. So I'm going to click on that green channel, drag down to the new layer icon and let go. Now I have a green copy channel and with that green copy channel selected, I'm going to press command or control L and I'm going to just add a whole bunch of contrast with our levels adjustment. I don't really need to bring up the black so much since there's already so much black in our photo, but I'm just going to bring up those whites a whole bunch. So then we're going to be keeping most of that detail of our flowers. Notice that it starts to add a little bit of the speckles around the edges and stuff, but that's not a big deal. We can get rid of that really easily using our brush tool. So something like this looks good for me. I'll click OK and then I'll hold Command or Control, hover over my green copy layer thumbnail, click on that to make an active selection. Now I'll go back to my layers and on my background copy here, I can just call this to flowers. I'll add that selection onto a layer mask turn off that background layer and now you see we have our flowers on their own layer. Now we might want to do a little bit of refinements here just because it is there is a little bit of fringing and things behind there. So what I'll do is double click on that flowers layer mask to bring up my select and mask option and I'm just going to bring up my smoothing, bring up my feather, bring up the contrast just a little and so that's looking a little bit better and then maybe I'll shift the edge in just a few points. It doesn't have to be totally perfect because again this is going to be on a black background so a lot of this stuff is going to blend in and not really be noticeable anyways. We're just wanting to make those edges look a little bit more clean and put together so just looking at the flowers around here they already are looking a lot better. Then the last thing I'll do is just check the decontaminate colors box and then scrolling down I'll make sure that it outputs to new layer with layer mask and I'll click OK. So now we have a flowers copy, we can delete our old flowers layer, and now our flowers are just the main thing that we're going to be dealing with. So I'm going to turn back on my background layer just so then we have our whole image visible once again. Now the last thing that we have to do just to touch everything up is we have to get rid of this these white speckles and things. So clicking on my flowers copy layer mask, I'll grab my brush tool, painting at 100% opacity with a hard brush. I'm just going to paint black over all of those areas on my layer mask because in terms of layer masks, black is 100% invisible. So that's going to make all of this stuff transparent. Won't be bothering us any longer. All right, so that is looking pretty good to me there. And now we have our flowers on one layer, our background on another layer. And now all our prep work is done and we can start adding the circle into our photo. So I'm gonna turn on that circle pixel blur one layer and I'm going to put it right between our flowers and our background. So now it looks as if our circle is sitting behind our flowers. So since I want this circle to snake around my flowers, what I'm gonna do is split it in half. So I'm gonna grab my pen tool, click somewhere in the middle of the circle, somewhere like this. I'll just click to add an anchor point, hold shift to make a nice straight anchor point and click down somewhere beneath and I'm going to box around the one side of my circle. Right click, go make selection, zero pixel feather radius, click OK and now I have an active selection. With that active selection and my circle pixel blur layer selected, I'm going to add that active selection onto a layer mask. Now as you see we only have half of our circle visible so we'll duplicate this circle blur copy and we'll call this to left side one and then since we want the other half of our circle to be visible the easiest way to do that is just click on our layer mask and press command or control i to invert the layer mask and now we have the other side of our circle visible so when i grab my move tool i can just drag that other half down somewhere beneath and everything's looking a-okay so just like that we have started to create this cool swirl effect but since we're going to have a couple other curves in here let's just shrink this down a little to make room for the other parts of the photo so i'll just shift click both these layers i'm going to just downscale them a little somewhere like this and that looks pretty good to me right there
So now to finish off this effect, we need to add another half circle up here and a half circle down here. To make this effect nice and easy, I'm going to just name each side right side one or left side one. That way I know that I'm going to be affecting either the right side or the left side of my flowers. So I'm going to duplicate my left side one by pressing command or control J and then it will make a left side one copy. I'll just rename that to left side two. And then with that left side two layer selected, I'm going to just drag that up and put it right above everything else. So something up here, trying to line up the edges as best as we can with the other swirl. So that looks pretty good to me there. Now I'll go down to my right side one layer and I'll press command or control J once again. And then I'm going to drag this one down to the bottom this time to finish off that final bit of swirl. Now the next thing to do is to add the cool extra additional effects is all we have to do is paint with our layer mask. So let's start on our left side two layer. I'm gonna click on the layer mask, grab my brush tool. This time we're gonna make sure we have a 0% hardness brush. And because we have that black background, this just blends really nicely. We're gonna paint with white onto this left side two layer mask. And we're just going to add back in that circle where it's visible, just leaving a little bit of a feather around the other side so it's not overlapping or anything like that. Now we're going to go and do the exact same thing pretty much with all of the other circles. So I'll go down to my right side one copy. I'll just re quickly rename that to right side two. On my right side two layer, I'll click on my layer mask and do the exact same thing once again. So just painting that back into visibility leaving that feather on the outside to make it look as if it's sort of flowing underneath the other circle. Now to complete this effect, we're gonna add a couple other half circles in here. So going to my left side one layer, I'm just gonna zoom in and paint some of that circle out in this area here. Since it's overlapping a bit, we'll have to clean that up. It'll take a little bit of finessing with your brush, but it is pretty straightforward. It's just painting white or black to add or remove some of the visibility of your layer to create this cool sort of twisty looking effect. Lastly, we're gonna go to the right side one and do the same thing. Nice soft brush, painting somewhere in between here with white as a foreground color. And now I'm really into the effect that we've created. I'll just quickly grab my crop tool, and just adjust my canvas up a little here just so I can see the outer edges of my pixel stretch effect and now this is looking really really cool. Lastly since we don't need the flowers on our background layer I'll just fill it with black by pressing alt and delete. The second to last step that we need to do is just get rid of these harsh edges between where we can see so we have two options you can either feather that out on your layer mask but since I kind of like them being really close together like this I'm just going to duplicate and add more flowers up here. So going up here to my flowers copy layer I'll just duplicate that one more time and I'm going to just grab my move tool, press command or control T, right click and go to flip horizontal. Now we have our same flowers just on the opposite side. I'll just drag these up and I'm gonna add them up in this area like this. And since it's flipped, it now just looks like a very busy bouquet of flowers. And with that, I'm feeling pretty good about these flowers, but I don't really like all this stuff up here. So to make life easy, I'll just shift click both my flower layers, press command or control G to group those, call that group to flowers. And just add a layer mask to that group and now painting black with a hard brush, I'm just going to mask out those flowers that I don't wanna see anymore. Now the final things that we can do to complete this effect is adjust the hue of our pixel stretch effect and then also play around with the hue of the flowers just to match whatever color we end up picking for this cool wavy effect in the background. But since that is all such a subjective thing, I'm gonna leave all that up to you. This is how my photo turned out. I ended up adding a little bit of purple and then adjusted the flowers and added a bit of red accordingly just to make the two color tones blend a little bit better. So if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more great tutorials just like this one. Now again, you do not need to have this Photoshop action pack to make a cool pixel stretch effect like this. It just makes the entire process so much faster, especially the circular pixel stretch. If you're wanting to learn a little bit more about this Photoshop action, then make sure to click the link down below where I share everything that you need to know before you go ahead and download this action pack. As you saw in this tutorial, this Photoshop action pack 
cut down the amount of time it took to create this effect in half because we didn't have to go and create these circular blurs manually. All we had to use was my circle pixel stretch Photoshop action. As you can see, there's an infinite amount of possibilities that you can create with this pixel stretch effect. It's such a fun effect that just really doesn't get old. Anyways guys, it's all I have for you for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the pixel stretch effect. And if you're wanting to see a little bit more of my work, make sure to find me on Instagram at burnwells. Again, my name is Brandon from bewillcreative.com and I hope to catch you back here next time for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.